The inscription on the Liberty Bell says, Proclaim liberty throughout the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. The Junior Leagues of New York State present By the People, the story of suffrage in New York State. This is the story of suffrage, the exciting drama of how the people of New York State gained their franchise. From the earliest right, days hold of... It, hold it. Uh, Jimmy, uh, take out the music and cut the mic. What's the matter? Uh, look, uh, these two words, suffrage and franchise, I, I think they're confusing everybody. What does suffrage mean? Exactly. What does it mean? It means the right to vote. Okay. Uh, what about franchise? Well, a franchise is a privilege given to somebody, like, uh, well, like... Uh, like the city gives a bus company the privilege of running buses on Main Street. All right, so what has that got to do with voting? Well, well uh, uh, under... <laughs> go ahead. Under our Constitution, people have the privilege of voting. In other words, voting is suffrage, and the privilege to vote is franchise. Right. Okay, then let's say it that way. Instead of throwing these big words around, let's say that this story is going to be about the people of New York State and their fight for the privilege of voting. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's good idea. Okay, then I'll tell you what. We'll start right from the first scene, the one that takes place in modern times. Uh, Jay, we'll begin from where the music comes in and then uh, right into the sound effect of the busy street. Got that? Okay, here we go. Stand by. Take it. <laughs> Hi, Frank. Hi, Charlie. Where are you going? Oh, I got to be my wife at dinner. Say, did you vote today? Me? Nah. What do you mean, nah? I went down there this morning, but there was a big line, so I didn't bother going in. Got my clubs and played some golf. That's no way to be. Oh, look, what's my one little vote? Well, suppose everybody said that. They don't. Besides, there are always good citizens like you to carry on. Oh, really, Frank, I'd like to vote, but I haven't got the time. I just haven't got the time. <laughs> got the money. I'd like to vote, but I haven't got the money. What about land? Huh, what land? My little acre? I'm a coppersmith, not a landowner. How many men do you know whose land is worth 20 pounds? You? All right. Van Ellen broke also. I can't think of anyone else in this town. The law states, in order to vote, your property must be valued at 20 pounds or over. And that lets me out. What about your rent and taxes? <laughs> My rent is too low to count, and I can hardly pay taxes. Then you can't vote. Nope. The law makes it too hard. Oh, believe me, Elkins, I'd like to vote. I want to vote. I just don't have the money. That was the trouble in the early part of the 1800s. To vote, one must have either land or money. Consequently, very few people voted. There were those who said, Well, my business is shoemaking. I'll stick to that. Let the politicians run the government. But there were also those who said, I think the existing laws are unfair. I change them. And since New Yorkers were progressive people who believed in changes for the better, the laws slowly were changed. As a balloon rising from the surface of the earth gains speed as excess weight is thrown overboard, so did the right to vote become easier as restricting laws and clauses were thrown out. <laughs> vote shall be given any white male citizen over the age of 21 years who can show that he has paid taxes, performed military service, or performed or paid for labor on the highways. Why should these have anything to do with the right to vote? 1846. The right to vote shall be given to any male citizen over the age of 21 who can show residence in the county for four months. But to no man of color. Now I can see a poor man voting, but a Negro, never. Why not? Why not? First of all, they're ignorant, and, and they're little more than slaves. Why, they shouldn't be allowed to vote. 
At first, the opposition to the Negro vote was great, but democracy triumphed, and those who wanted to see the Negro in political chains grew fewer and fewer in number. Finally, in 1867, the Negro was given the right to vote, and the word white was stricken from the list of qualifications. So little by little, restriction by restriction, the unfair requirements for voting were dropped from New York State Constitution. From time to time, the people of New York State elected constitutional conventions for this purpose. There remained, however, one other word, male. <laughs> Can you imagine the nerve of it? That woman ought to have a head examined. She wants women to vote. <laughs> I'll bet the first thing she votes for is a husband. <laughs> hey, hey who, who is she anyway? A school mom named Susan B. Anthony. <laughs> you never heard of her. Uh, no one ever will. Who was this Susan B. Anthony? A Quaker from Rochester. A woman who had the quite mad idea that women should be allowed to vote. A woman who set off one of the biggest political explosions in history. Susan B. Anthony was a crusader. There can be no doubt about that. And her lifelong crusade was... Equal rights for women. Always interested in bettering the human race, Susan B. Anthony first came into the public eye in the year 1852. The Sons of Temperance held a convention in Albany. Miss Anthony, the delegate from Rochester, attended. And so I hereby propose a resolution stating that the practice of selling and drinking strong alcoholic beverages Mr. be dis Chairman. discontinued and that Mr. this convention... Chairman. A question. I I must remind the lady from Rochester that although she and her sister delegates have been invited to this convention, they are to listen and observe, but not to speak. But, Mr. Chairman... Miss Anthony, you are quite out of order. Very well, then. If I cannot speak, I will not speak. Nor will I remain at this meeting a moment longer. Mr. Chairman, I resign. <laughs> Susan, do you think you were right? Of course I was. Listen, Carrie, if a man gets drunk and beats his wife, who suffers? The wife. Therefore, the women should have at least something to say about temperance. Fortunately, I'm not alone in my sentiments. Do you know what, Carrie? We're going to form our own league. We'll call it the Women's Temperance Convention. If all the women speak out, they will be heard. <laughs> This was typical of the drive, which was a basic part of Susan's nature. Wherever possible, she struck boldly against petty, silly conventions. Naturally, it followed that her anger should be aroused at the age-old custom which kept women from voting. Repeatedly, she tried to influence lawmakers. Repeatedly, she failed. the state constitution comes up for revision. They say this woman suffrage business is going to be quite an issue. What do you think? Well, it might not be a bad idea letting women vote, I mean. Yes, but don't you see if they let women vote, then most of them will vote the way their husbands vote. And that'll be the same as letting every man vote twice. No, no. I'm going to do everything I can to stop it. Well, that's your privilege, Thomas. Oh, by the way, I hear uh, Susan B. Anthony's going to be there. <laughs> she would be. To tell the truth, I'm looking forward to seeing her. Because if she ever gets started, there'll be some fireworks. And I mean fireworks. <laughs> Which one is uh, this Miss Anthony? That one in the red shawl. You can always spot her by her Mr. red shawl. Mr. Horace Greeley. 
I would like to address my remarks to Miss Anthony. Very well, Mr. Greeley. I'm listening. Mm. Uh, don't you agree, Miss Anthony, that the ballot goes hand in hand with the bullet? And if we allow you to vote, you must therefore be prepared to fight? I most certainly do. And I am prepared to fight, just as you fought in the Civil War, at the end of a pen. Quiet, quiet. Hmm. Very nicely said. But I still maintain that 95% of all decent, intelligent women do not want to vote. Mr. Chairman, I have in my hand a petition asking that women in New York State be allowed to vote. It is signed by 300 women, including Mrs. Horace Greeley. Oh, my own <laughs> Unfortunately, Susan's strategy made a bitter enemy of many influential men who used all their power and succeeded in keeping the vote for women out of the Constitution. But from a simple determination born of a Quaker heritage, Susan B. Anthony refused to give in. She had papers written, went on lecture tours, spoke to audiences, some of whom actually tried to force her off the stage with jeers and catcalls. In Albany, Woman must be elevated to her rightful place in society. Oneonta. The time has come for woman to regard herself as her own master. Rochester, 1872. Uh, yes, madam, may I help you? I've come to vote. I beg your pardon? I have come to vote. Oh, but, but that's against the law. According to the United States Constitution, as just amended, no mention is made of a person's sex as regards voting. I have come to vote. Madam, if you don't refrain from this ridiculous attempt, I shall be forced to call a policeman and have you arrested. Then arrest me. no reason to even begin a trial. Miss Anthony has broken a law, and I order the jury to find her guilty. I object. Objection overruled. Miss Anthony, have you anything to say as to why you should not be found guilty? Yes, Your Honor. I have broken no law, yet I have been denied every due process of law. Your treatment of me has been cruel and unjust. Today, you outlaw slavery, yet 75 years ago, you would have thrown into jail anyone harboring a runaway slave. Times change, but you don't. And less than 50 years from now, I warrant you, the slaves you have made of women shall be free, free to lead their own lives, and free to vote. You are guilty, Miss Anthony, and I find you $100. The crime? Voting. I shall never pay it. And Susan B. Anthony did not pay the fine. The bill, now yellowed with age, still may be seen in the Canandaigua courthouse. And to every corner of the state and nation, Susan's clear voice brought the message of suffrage, gaining followers of both sexes. From her courageous actions and from her refusal to be swayed from what she thought the right path, women all over the United States today enjoy the privilege of casting their ballots. And finally, in 1920, the New York State Constitution was amended and the word male dropped from the law. To a New York State woman, the entire nation can be thankful. Nor is the problem of suffrage solved. Even now, as you're listening to this, men and women are debating new ways of voting, new ways of ensuring that this state keep the precious freedoms already won, maintaining the remarkable progress it has made, and remain a government of the people.
have been listening to the story of suffrage. This program was presented by the Junior Leagues of New York State in cooperation with the State Department of Education and was produced in the studios of WPTR, Albany, New York. Thank you.